I was sort of very interested in studying issues of aggression and sort of failure between girls in particular. And I did a project in 2011 and 2012 that was on youth sexting. And it was one of the first qualitative projects on youth sexting in the United Kingdom. And it was one of the first times as well that I had done work with stakeholders that was creating knowledge that would be taken into the public sphere and that the findings would be informing policy and, you know, our, our understandings of like risks and harms and what should be done to help protect uh, young people. It was a really difficult project. I found a lot of failed intimacies and problematic practices. And um, I sort of, in a way, just struggled with this constant kind of narrative of risk and harm. And um, in about 2013, I started to sort of like see this momentum of a shift in public consciousness towards um, girls themselves sort of like, not articulating a proto type of feminism, which I've been looking at before, which is like, they resist subjectification into femininity norms, but like an explicit articula articulation of feminism, which was like a really big shift. And then I was able to be like, okay, I can actually study how girls themselves articulating feminist activism and rising up themselves because it was happening in the kind of like ecosystem and the media spheres. I really wanted to kind of like go back to my interest in um, aggression between girls and young women. And we look pretty carefully in that paper at an episode of internalized misogyny. I suppose more recently come to understand um, these internalizations of patriarchal, <laughs> heteropatriarchal norms, um, because this girl is a victim of um, actually a deep fake uh, dick pic um, through which she responds with images of her own self and then she is victim blamed, slut shamed and um, excluded from um, the, the group. And it's really interesting because it's a Muslim, a, a group of young Muslim women and there's a lot of discussion around um, how you present yourself online. But I think it really demonstrates the type of work that we still need to do to shift the conceptual framework in schools so that these things are understood as abuse so that we can kind of stop victim blaming and slut shaming uh, in its tracks because it just keeps repeating and repeating and repeating and that is because the actual policies and the resources that schools use they're not good they don't actually understand conceptually what's going on and they don't categorize them as harms and abuses. This project uh, was uh, conducted in collaboration with Dr. Caitlin Regeer from uh, the University of Kent and uh, the School of Sexuality Education. And uh, we did it on very little funds. We worked as a feminist collaborative team. Um, and we just felt that it was really urgently needed that we investigated uh, this um, issue at that time. I think a really important message for um, PhD students and early career researchers, well, any researcher, is really to take the impact agenda seriously, not in the kind of corporate performativity, take a box impact, but actually doing socially engaged and meaningful social justice work in our work. And I think that that really entails working with key stakeholders and other change agents from the outset, um, not sort of having our academia in a box uh, where we read books and we just publish our academic articles, but really engaging with the community. You know, social media is just so critically important about how communities are created, how misinformation is spread, how we can like um, counter that, how we can um, encourage progressive forms of activism, so I just, if you're working in the areas of social media, I just think that really doing an impact informed research and thinking through that agenda from the beat, from the outset, it's necessary. I, I actually believe it's really the, the, the ethically and politically responsible thing to do, um, especially, you know, now we're like in a COVID post 
whatever pre middle of COVID era where, uh, you know, inequalities are worsening. And, you know, as, as media scholars, I think we have um, important things that we can do to um, address that.